What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie2988 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. And this is going to be this week's rambling video, my vlogging video, where I talk about myself and life and the universe and things around us, things that are particularly interesting to me. And uh, when I came into the studio here today and checked my email and checked my Twitter feed, uh, my Twitter feed was filled with a handful of people uh, talking about Casey Neistat's latest video. And if you haven't seen it yet, or if you don't know who Casey Neistat is, Casey Neistat is easily my favorite vlogger. The guy does an amazing job of doing what he does. He puts some real art into his, his, his vlogs, and they're pretty fascinating. The guy lives a pretty fascinating life. So I have nothing but love and respect for him. But today he made a video um, endorsing, endorsing Hillary Clinton. And then furthermore, did something that I consider a mistake. But, you know, that's fine. I, mean, I can have my opinion. You may not agree. But he challenged other YouTubers to endorse Hillary as well. And he said that you should, as a YouTuber, call out the YouTubers that don't talk about the election, that don't want to talk about the stuff, um, and, and get them to talk about it and to endorse Hillary to guarantee her win. Um, I don't welcome that kind of thing. Because one of the reasons I don't talk about this election to begin with is that a lot of people can be very, very negative when you share your opinion on YouTube. And I, especially with the new medications and things that I'm on, I cannot handle uh, th that kind of negative criticism, that kind of negative response. And by creating a video like that, Casey has put me into a position where even though I've chosen not to talk about it, to avoid that negative response, I'm now getting that negative response because people are taking his challenge and challenging me to talk about it. So feeling like I have no choice and I'm put into a corner and my anxiety disorder is flaring up, let's talk about it and get it the hell out of the way. First thing you need to know about me is that I am a registered Republican who has never voted Republican in my lifetime. I have voted Democrat in every single presidential election. The very first election I was aware of was 1980. I'm an old man. I remember in 1980 when we elected... President Reagan for the first time. I was around for his second election. I was around when we voted Bush Sr. into office. And I, the very first election I voted in was voting for uh, Clinton the very first time. I voted for Bill twice. Uh, I voted for Al Gore in 2000. I voted against Bush again in 2004. I voted for Obama uh, twice. And now this would probably be, if I choose not to vote for Hillary, I think this will be the first election in my 42 years on this planet that I did not press D on the screen or pull the D lever or poke the D button. I think when I tell people that I have trouble voting for Hillary Clinton, uh, people will tell me that I, that makes me sexist, and maybe it does. I don't consciously believe that her being a woman has anything to do with it, but a lot of people insist that it does, so maybe it does, but I, I, I don't personally think so. My opinions uh, uh, when it comes to Hillary Clinton has a lot less to do with her sex and a lot less to do with her personality and a lot more to do with the policies that, that she represents. And out of all the Democrats that I've ever had the opportunity to vote for, she is definitely the most centered Democrat I've ever had the opportunity to vote for. She is certainly probably more right uh, outside of this country. I've had friends tell me that she's very, very conservative and they're very surprised that she's our liberal candidate. And I'm a very liberal person, maybe not when it comes to, you know, social equality and things along that lines. But when it comes to domestic policies, especially, I'm a very liberal person. I grew up in Head Start. I was once on disability. I proudly and gladly pay my Medicare and my Medicaid taxes every year I'm just that kind of guy. That's, that's who and what I am. But here's the thing with America's broken two-party system. Uh, you either get, you never get what you want. You only ever get the thing that is the least that you want and then the second least of what you want. And that's the case with this election. And in my opinion, Donald Trump is certainly the least of what I want. There's little to nothing represented about my ideals or my personalities or my vision for America inside of Donald Trump's vision for America. Uh, Hillary Clinton does happen to overlap in a couple of areas, so I guess theoretically I should endorse her and shouldn't vote for her. But like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm an old man, and I'm disenfranchised at this point. I'm exhausted of voting for the person that will do the least amount of damage. It is tiresome. It is awful. And then to watch that person who I voted for go in and do a tremendous amount of damage with my endorsement is just something I can't do anymore. And I really don't want to do it in this election. I don't want to do it for her.
Now, the good news about this is that I live in a very deeply red state here in Arkansas where Donald Trump is polling 20, 30, 50 points ahead for all I know. And my a vote will literally mean nothing in the state of Arkansas. Arkansas is already marked down as red for Donald Trump. I could literally vote for Big Bird, who I think I will vote for is any third party candidate. I think the only way that my vote will count in this particular state is if I add to the multitude of people who are sick of the two party system and choose a third party candidate in the hopes that, that with this election, there can at least be a footnote in history that says more people voted in the, for a third party in this election than ever before. I don't think it'll happen, but I, I want to try. Now, here's the thing. In, in Casey's video, he does something that everybody is doing right now because it's so easy to do, and that's demonizing uh, Donald Trump. And it's easy to do because there are a lot of demonic qualities the guy has. And when you really do your research on Hillary, you'll find that while her demonic qualities are, are different, she definitely has some demonstrative issues of her own, and they are pretty fucking terrifying as well. Now, we've already said that I'm a exhausted old man, and chances are, if you're watching this, you're not. And I've also told you that I live in a very deeply red state, so my vote doesn't matter. Yours absolutely does. Over the last 42 years, I have put in a, a vote for one of the two primary candidates. In most cases, the person I voted for won, which means I share in the blame that this country is in. But at the same time, at least I did my due duty, my due diligence, and I participated in the system. And you really, really need to in this election because it is a very, very important one. One of these two candidates is going to represent you throughout the nation for the next four years, possibly the next eight and that person is going to be doing damage to your country, other countries, our world image, to you personally. And you need to determine who it is that, that is going to do the least amount of damage, and you need to put that person into office. And if you are of the opinion, uh, the same as I am, that both of these clowns are going to do a tremendous amount of damage while in office, here's the question you have to ask yourself. Whose damage are you more capable of living with? Are you more capable of living with the type of damage that Donald will do or the type of damage that Hillary will do? And you should look at the track record of the type of damage they've done up to this point to give yourself a really good idea of what kind of damage they'll do. So if you'll allow me to do something I very rarely do, I will offer my opinion on this topic in the hopes that it helps you find yours. I personally, with my politics, could not live with the types of damage that, uh, that Trump would do in this nation. Um, his politics are vastly different from mine, and when he gets into office, I feel that he's rather unqualified for the job. I think at the end of the day, he will do things that would make it a less hospitable country for people like me. When it comes to Hillary, I think that she will do just as much damage, but just in a vastly different way. I think the things that I hold dear as a, an important part of this nation, I think she also holds them dear, and I hope, I hope, I hope that if she's elected, she will make this place just as hospitable for it to live in, for me to live in it as I, as it is right now. I don't think she would make it much worse for people like me. Now, is that an endorsement for her? Absolutely not. And I will tell you that I think you need to make up your own decision. You need to determine the type of person you are, the type of things you hold dear. You need to do your research on these two people, and you need to choose one of the two, if at all possible. And if you're in a deeply blue or a deeply red state, and it really doesn't matter what you do, you should look into the third-party candidates as well. There's some real options there. Not anybody that could actually win this thing, but there's at least a message to be sent that you were tired of voting in a two-party system, and you wanted to do something different. Different. But, but here's the thing, if your vote matters, if your vote counts, you will be the person that puts one of these people in office. You, right now, the person watching this. If you choose not to vote, uh, it will be your fault that the person who wins, wins. If you choose to vote, at least you did your best. Because while I've never really liked any of the presidents th that we've ever had, including the ones that I voted for and won, even though I vastly disagreed with a lot of things that they did and were disappointed in the things that they didn't do, I have slept comfortable at night knowing that I exercised my voice and my right and that it was my candidate and that I had every right to complain about it. I have every right to be pissed off because I was involved in the system. Whether I won or lost, I was involved and you should be involved. 
And actually, after listening to my self-talk for the last 15 or 20 minutes, I'm wondering if I'm trying to convince you or if I'm trying to convince me. I think maybe I'm even trying to convince myself here that it is important that I either pull D or R. And I think you could probably guess who I'm going to vote for, even if it is pointless. So that's my response to, to Casey's video. And that's the best I can do for you, buddy. Uh, if you ever watch this, know I, I love your work, man, and, and keep it up. I hope you can realize that you created a lot of extra uh, anxiety for me today by making videos like that. But I know you think you're doing the right thing, and probably objectively you are, even if subjectively it's, it's difficult to have my fan base involved in this way. But that's fine. That's fine. I will say this. Everybody condemns Donald Trump, and that's easy to do, and I can easily do it here. Donald Trump kind of sucks. That's fine. Uh, that's not the problem I have with this election. My problem is in the not also condemning Hillary. It's easy to condemn them both for me. Uh, neither of them represent me in a way that I want to be represented. And it sucks. It sucks. It just sucks. So uh, if, you, if you wanted me or if you needed me to condemn Donald, there, there you go. Stop grabbing pussies, Donald. <sighs> Guys, thanks for watching. I love you very much. And I'll speak with you again soon.